All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day now, broadcasting to you from my new location. Basically what I did is I found every piece of art that I've ever owned or that has ever existed in my possession and just threw it up on the wall. I just want this to be cool, fucking fun and exciting. Uh, I do want to give a shout out real quick before we get started. Where is my emails? Uh, one of my subscribers sent me this sweet ass guar poster right here. It's actually this one right here. Bunk, bunk, bunk. Uh, that's from their 2009 tour. It is a signed guar poster signed by everybody. Signed by Flatus, who unfortunately passed away. Signed by Odorous, who unfortunately passed away. Additionally, seen, signed by Beefcake, Ballsback, Balzac, and Jizmac which they are all still alive, continuing Guar. So uh, I, do, I do have to properly give him a shout out and I prematurely hit record before I had his, uh, his shout out ready. But uh, while I look for that, I just wanna say we do have, uh, we do have an action packed vlog today. I actually have, oh no, what is his name? Reese, Reese, his name is Reese. His name is Reese. Shout out to you, Reese. Fist bumps for the fucking coolest Guar poster. I don't care for the Jägermeister logo at the top of it, which you can kind of see, but uh, but otherwise, you know what? It's pretty cool. Uh, it's it's a signed poster by Guar, one of my favorite bands of all time. Additionally, the Stormtrooper right next to it uh, that was sent to me from the Plumes of Hazard. So shout out to the Plumes of Hazard. I think that's great. So obviously, yes, just. Nonsense. I've always wanted to do this. Stuart is still with us, although not rocking a t-shirt uh, or anything like that anymore. But yeah, so so things are good. Uh, moves are good. Uh, I did actually get my internet back, so hopefully this will be up later tonight. One thing that I do want to do is go back to shooting my vlogs at night. So I'm going to need to get some sick lighting. I'm relying mostly on sunlight right now uh, for my main lighting and I do need to get some sick lighting so that I can shoot at night which is what I really 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 want to do so uh, moving forward I do have some activism stuff for you and again you know I don't have any activism uh, activism sort of intro or anything like that and I don't think I will but Indiana I'm just gonna head over to Kassad.org because that's who I'm going to be uh, linking to anyway Indiana uh, Oh, I spelled it wrong. Don't spell kasaorg.org wrong. Uh, so there's a lot of call to actions happening. Um, there, what's crazy is there's a call to action in Texas right now um, that would uh, uh, amend. Uh, oh no, okay, so this is like a positive call to action. Oh no, no, never mind. SB 97 should be amended to remove unnecessary hurdles to. Uh, Adults access to vapor products online. The thing, and, and in Texas, there's this huge push right now for the legalization uh, to legalize it, man. Uh, marijuana, that is. And uh, yet they are still, still, still going after vapor, uh, which just drives me insane. And there was one in Indiana. Uh, Ohio HB64 is still going on. Where the crap is the Indiana one? There's one in Indiana. Uh, maybe I can look through my emails. I apologize. You know what? I, I just basically got this room set up. And uh, I, haven't, uh, I haven't been able to, uh, to actually get some, some, uh, some vlog notes together. So this is kind of all off the top of, uh, all off the cuff. Uh, shoot. Uh, no, shoot, I can't, there's something going on in Indiana and I can't find it right now because there's not, let's search calls to action by state. Um, where is Indiana? I'm just kidding, I know where Indiana is. I don't, I, d I don't know where Indiana. Okay, so uh, Saturday, February 14th, 2015, Andy, Indiana call to action, multiple Indiana bills would threaten access and use of e Cigarettes. Uh, SB 539 was narrowly passed out of the state 
uh, Technology and Commerce Committee on 129. It has now been referred to the Tax and Fiscal Policy Committee. A hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, 2.17 at 8.30 a.m. Uh, testimonies will only be taken. I believe this is the one that everybody marched for. Um, where are the updates? Updated 121. What's the newest update? Updated 3315. So that's uh, what? That's yesterday. Uh, HB 1432 companion to SB 539 will be heard at the Senate Public Policy Committee Wednesday. Oh, this isn't going to be in time. Wednesday, March 4th, 2015 at 1 p.m. Click here for the agenda. Hoosier Vapors is calling for Indiana Vapors to gather in the State House uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana, on Wednesday, 3, 4, 15, which uh, it is not. It's already passed. This is the 5th. Well, I hope that went well. I apologize. I, I was trying to get this vlog uh, together. Even if I had uploaded the Indiana call to action last week at... Uh, it probably would not have. Uh, it probably would not have. Uh, you know, I, I would. I just wouldn't have been able to get it up on time. So I apologize for that. You know what? And activism is one of those things where uh, uh, it's the difference between a day and a week is huge. Um, a lot of times, these committee meetings and these health committee meetings, they they get snuck in, kind of like. Uh, Oh, by the way, two days from now we're having a committee meeting. I hope your party can show up and uh, testify. They do it. They sneak it in right there. There's not a lot, a whole lot of warning, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, here's what I'm going to do: a sort of a blanket, uh, a sort of a blanket activism thing. I'm just going to link in the description to the CASA call to action page. The first one on there is Texas, Utah. There's New Hampshire, Montana, Connecticut, Ohio, Washington. New Hampshire again, Arizona, New Mexico, Indiana, North Dakota, Hawaii. There is a lot going on right now. So keep uh, keep your ears open, keep your eyes open for anything possibly happening in your state or your city and just bookmark calls the CASA calls to action page. When you open your internet browser, just have it pop up, uh, have it pop up first. So yeah, so let's... Uh, Let's get past that. Let's move on to some beer. And oh, oh, I have some beer. I got out my beer budget hands and I went and spent fucking $16 on one single bottle of beer. I'm just going to peel this uh, sticker off of here so it stops reminding me. Um, getting texted like crazy person. Um, who was that? Why do I have a... Hi. Uh, yeah, I'm vlogging. People, uh, here's the thing. That's fine. Um, people will text me, and they they don't know that I'm shooting video or that I'm vlogging, so it just interrupts. Uh, that's fine. Norm, are you available for a t quick t telephone call? Uh, currently vlogging. Currently vlogging, Norm. Vlogging. Currently vlogging. Uh, that's going to be a while. So... I got a beer. Uh, I went down to my local place and I picked up a $16 bo dollar bottle of beer. And I don't know much about this beer other than it's a uh, Russian River. It's called Supplication. And I'm going to post a link in the description as always to the Russian River a website. Uh, I'll post a link to the Beer Advocate as well. In fact, let's just go to the Beer Advocate. Russian, Russian River Supplication. Uh, beer Advocate. So on Beer Advocate, this has a double 100 rating. Double 100s, which means it's good. This is a world-class beer. It has scored 100% out of 5,000 ratings, uh, which I think is uh, I think is just I think that's just crazy. And I saw the label, and I saw a little supplication printed on there, and I just knew no matter what uh, my beer budget hand said that I had to purchase this. I'm not sure if anybody else is noticing. That is a cork, and uh, I don't like corks at all. They scare me. Uh, so I'm gonna open this aged in Pinot Noir barrels with cherries. It's fermented in this bottle. Let's read the brief description they have on the Russian River Brewing Company website. Brown ale aged in Pinot Noir barrels from local Sonoma County wineries. Uh, it is aged for about 12 months with sour cherries, 
Brentum Brent Bretonum sites, lacto lactodhalbilis, and paradi paradicocoes. <laughs> Big words added in each barrel. Flavor from the cherries, Pinot Noir, and oak balance each other nicely with a little funk. A little funk. Okay. Pub draft and in bottles, local distribution. So Russian River Brewing Company is up in uh, is up in Northern California in the Santa Rosa Sonoma area, which I've visited pretty frequently, and I've uh, I've regretted not. Uh, I regretted not going to that brewery uh, every time that I'm up there. Okay, so as always, corks scare me. <sighs> this is a tense moment because I fucking hate corks. So people have told me to hold the cork and twist the bottle down. <sighs> it smells like wine. It just straight up smells like wine. I'm not getting into any wine reviews here. Um, so I'm gonna pour this, as always, into like a tulip style glass, once again, right over my keyboard. It's kind of a light amber color, a very light tan head on top of there. Try and get a nice little head going right there. Something that Ruby Roo would be proud of. Uh, whenever I drink uh, beer, um, I always, I always do my best to impress Ruby Roo because she's like the beer expert and I can only hope to be on her level someday. Looks nice, the head's dissipating pretty quickly but it's a nice light head, nice light color. Smells, smells like wine, cherries. It actually smells like Northern California. Like if you go to Northern California, like downtown Santa Rosa, there is great restaurants there, there's always good wine there. Because of Russian River, there's always good beer. Uh, a lot of the restaurants in Northern California and the Santa Rosa, Sonoma area carry Russian River like on tap, which is, I mean, Pliny the Elder. Hello, Pliny the freaking Elder. But uh, let's have a taste of this supplication. I'm pretty excited about it. It is tart. It is very astringent. It tastes like a, uh, a a very dry wine, like it's drying out my mouth when I drink it. This is this is really bizarre. This is like a because my brain says that tastes like wine, but it's carbonated and it, it has still like a like an ale feel to it. Crazy. This is crazy talk. Supplication. This is really nice. Um, this is this. I could see this being like a, more of like a a summer, like warm, like craft beer. There's a lot of craft beer that's really dark, and on a hot day, the last thing I want to do is crack open a refreshing, you know, uh, oatmeal stout, or crack open a refreshing old Rasputin Russian Imperial stout. Sometimes on hot days, on warm days, you need something a little lighter, something a little more refreshing. This, very refreshing. There's a nice strong cherry wine note to it. Additionally, it's uh, very, very carbonated, so that kind of ups the refreshment level. It does kind of taste like a beer. It, to me, here's what I taste in my head, is if you dumped a very light American style ale in a cup with some red wine and champagne. That's the exact sensation I'm getting. If that makes sense in anybody's head but mine, please let me know. Actually, don't let me know because I know that I'm going to be a crazy person, but that's exactly what this beer tastes like. Russian River, supplication, good stuff. Uh-oh. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, Sheik. Sorry, Robin. Sorry, Stuart. Mm. That astringent uh, mouthfeel is... Uh, Oh, it's very, very strange. So I want to do some shout outs. Um, the first person I want to shout out is uh, Gorgor Brittany. And I don't know if you watch Gorgor Brittany's videos, um, but I, I really like her style. It's fun. It's fun to find something in common with people that outside of vaping. You know what I mean? Like when you go to a meet, we all have vaping in common. But it's nice to find things outside of vaping that you have in common. And, what, and I love watching Gorgor Brittany's videos because she is a big, uh, big horror movie fan. Additionally, I am a huge horror movie fan. I like uh, 
blood and gore and guts and scary shit, evil shit, skulls and Satan and things like that. And so it's cool when she's like sitting in her little vape area and there's like Michael Myers on the wall and then a Freddy glove and she's like, this vape's really good. Also, I like horror movies. So Gorgor Brittany, here's a shout out to you. Uh, I think your videos are fantastic. I think you should keep it up no matter what. Um, but I'll post a link. Uh, I'll post a link down in the description to where you can watch Gorgor Brittany's videos. I think she has cool videos. Plus, her name is Gorgor Brittany, and she doesn't spell it the same way. But there is a Guar song called Gorgor, and uh, it's one of my favorite Guar songs. I used to listen to it when I was skiing with uh, little earbud headphones in, just because it's a rad song. It's off my favorite album, and. I just, uh, you know, when I saw the name Gorgor Brittany, I instantly, Guar popped into my head. And I was like, Gorgor, da 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 But anyway, that's the shout out that I wanted to do, Gorgor Brittany. I do have some more shout outs that I want to do. Um, let's get on to, uh, let's get on to, wow, I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't, this email address is all numbers. Um, but I did give them, okay, Norm. Norm. Uh, he says, I've been watching you for a while now. Uh, I know you may not be able to respond, but I notice you don't ha quite have your O's down at the end of your last video. By pushing your jaw forward and don't over exaggerate, you'll know what I mean when you try it. I hate it when people say that. Vape tricks can be complicated, but once you have the basics taken care of, uh, yeah, push the O and be gentle. Ease up on it. Keep your distance after that. Try blowing a ghostly into it that makes for a sick looking jellyfish practice makes perfect uh, if you feel this is shout out worthy my name is will but everybody jokingly calls me wheel that's funny because there's a group of people uh, that call me neek n-e-e-e-e-e-e-k and your wheel wheel all right, Will, uh, thank you for the, uh, consider yourself shouted out. Thank you for the tips on the O's. Um, at the end of my vlogs and stuff like that, I try to practice, uh, I try to practice my O's and they never, they never go very, they never get, they never go very well. My lower, pushing your lower jaw out actually helps a little bit. Did it, did it look like that was a little bit better? I'm going to keep plugging at it, Will, but thank you so much. Uh, thank you. So <laughs> thank you so much, Will, for the... Uh, for the pointers, um, um, uh, I have uh, I have one more shout out to give here. Um, I don't I just don't want this to run too too. Uh, I just don't want this to run too long. I do have some first impressions to do as well as I want to do a review for this box mod as well as. Oof, pardon me, retro vaping. Um, I apologize. I've been without the internet for the last couple days. So comments. Uh, PMs, Instagram, emails, they've all they've all fallen behind. I'm like 180 emails behind right now and I'm going to plug away for the next like two days and really try to get caught up on my emails, comments, and PMs. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I apologize for those. Uh, I apologize for those not being answered. But I have a shout out to do. Dear Grim Green, my name is Jen. My husband's name is Chris. Uh, my husband loves watching your YouTube's videos. He loves your reviews. I'm new to vaping and I'm very slow when it comes to the mechanics of it. But because of my husband's support uh, uh, with vaping, I have quit smoking cigarettes. That's, that's fantastic, Jen. I should be giving you the shout out. And I want to thank him for that. And I know the best gift would be to meet you or maybe a shout out from you. I would greatly appreciate anything you can do for him. His birthday is April 3rd. He'll be 24 this year. Thank you. Jeanette. Uh, below is a picture of my husband. Just looks like a normal dude. He's wearing a San Francisco Giants t-shirt. He's got glasses and a buzz cut. Uh, and uh, he just uh, 
he just looks like a normal dude. So yes, Chris, consider yourself shouted out. And uh, Jen as well, consider yourself shouted out. Obviously, not only do I just love feedback, uh, getting feedback on people who watch my videos, but I also love more than anything else hearing success stories of people who are like, I've gone a week, I've gone a month, I've gone a year without smoking traditional tobacco cigarettes because of vaping. And that, uh, that makes me so, so happy. So Chris, thanks for taking care of Jen. Thanks for guiding her along the way to get her into the vaping world. I think that's, uh, I think that's just fantastic. So Chris and Jen, yes. You guys are uh, are absolutely shouted out. Um, that's what I got for beer. That's what I got for shout outs. Um, do I even have? Oh, I do have a first impression. That's right. I have a first impression that I'm actually very excited about. So let's do that. Let's do first impressions. All right. So this is going to be a, a very, very literal first impression. Uh, a guy by the name of Professor Vape sent over some uh it's interesting he he sent me an email and i was kind of like why what are you why why are you doing that what are you doing so he rebuilds coil heads but it's not coil heads like uh atlantis or sub tank coil heads these are old school sort of uh Pro tank heads. Um, so this is what he included. There's a tank in here. So let me just read this. Our handcrafted coils are made by using resistance, non-resistant setup. That's good. That's when you have a coil with resistance wire in between wires with no resistance wire so that you don't sort of, you know, sometimes when you build, rebuild pro tank head or EVOD heads, you, 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 you you have the possibility to scorch your uh, scorch your rubber grommets that are in there, so this completely prevents that. Um, organic cotton wick. The wick can be easily replaced, and the coil can be dry burned, rinsed, or cleaned. Some people have had the same coil for up to six months now, but on average they last one to three months. We recommend changing the cotton wick once a week uh, when you are changing juices to keep the flavor fresh and to stop gunk from building up on the coil. That's basic uh, rebuilding 101. Our sub-ohm coils sub ohm coils on a kanger pro tank uh, are the same concept we recommend our customers to be a little careful if they choose to dry burn the coils and they can get very hot only fire the device for a couple of seconds so pulse it we advise customers rinse the coil dry and re-wick uh, these coils can fit fit the same devices however for customers to get the best experience we recommend devices with more air flows like our sub tank uh, dual coil adapter the dual coil adapter Dual coil adapter. That must be what this is. It's simple. It just fills the gap to make a single coil fit a dual coil device without any leaking. These blue bands simply slot over the chimney and you're good to go. I apologize. These are currently cut by hand, uh, but they will machine cut to precision in a couple weeks. Um, so they include uh, a sub tank that is the Smoke Trophy tank. Version 2. They have modified it to give more airflow. Let's open it. This is the smoke uh, trophy tank, which I have never used in my entire life. And this is, if you want to talk about first impressions, everybody, this is uh, this is the most true first impressions you'll ever see. So that's the smoke tank. Yeah, looks like a looks like a pro tank. Looks like a pro tank. Let me dispose of those. Yep. There you go. So your base goes in. Your, I mean, it's very, very straightforward. I don't think that comes off. How did they modify this to get more airflow? That's the only thing I'm wondering. Okay, so let's pick a coil here. Let's pick a 0 0.4 ohm coil. Why not? How about a 0 0.4 ohm coil? Is this going to fit in here? Huh. It fits in there. So they just look like regular coils. You're not going to be able to see that because it's blurry as all hell. They look like regular coils. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to plug this into the base here. They look like regular coil heads. Regular smoke tech coil heads. So all I'm going to do is kind of plug this into the base. 
just like you used to, just like back in the day. But these are organic cotton, and this is a 0 0.4, 0 0.4 ohm coil head in there. That that is kind of crazy. Um, he did send me some juice, but I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to throw I'm just going to throw some Namber Juice Monterey Beach Blend in there. I haven't vaped this juice in quite a while, and uh, I'm interested to uh, see how it feels at six milligram in this particular coil head. So what I'm going to need to do, I'm guessing, is uh, hmm. so I'm going to let this sit. I'm going to let this marinate for a second. Okay, it's on there. They're poking out the bottom. I, I kind of want to just let this sit and marinate for a bit. I want to get the. I want to let the juice flow in there. Um, so he's got uh, the coils, what's included, Professor Expert's mini tank, uh, which is a smoke mini trophy tank. We remove the original coil and replace with our own handcrafted micro coils. Um, so you're probably asking, why would I buy pre-built coils if I can just rebuild my own coils? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing with that. He sent me some juice, Breaking Beakers, strawberry, Breaking Beakers, six milligram. Here's the thing with that. Um, yeah, you can rebuild your own coil heads. People have been doing it since the dawn of man. I have a video out there on how to rebuild your own coil heads. In fact, leading into the next thing, I'm going to be talking about that. Um, I may not do a full, full review for this, for this product, but uh, what I am going to do, oops, let me get some batteries here. What I'm going to do is vape it right now. And additionally, the next thing I'm going to be talking about, the coiling kits, I'm not going to do a full video for it either because I don't really feel like they necessitate their own full review. And later on, I'm going to be talking about this thing right here. This is a Tesla wooden 120 box. We're going to be talking about why I hate this thing. But... For the sake of this video, I'm going to be using it. Now I'm terrified. I'm just terrified. So I'm going to, nope, that's up. I'm going to turn this down. I'm going to turn this way down. I'm going to turn this way down to like 30 watts. And I'm terrified of getting a dry hit right out of the bat. So I'm going to try to get some juice flowing in there. I see some bubbles happening. I know this is thrilling vlog time, thrilling, for, especially thrilling for the audio people. You know what? I'm just going to let that marinate. I'm just going to let that marinate for a second. We're going to talk about this coiling kit. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see all the products because I'm going to be holding a lot of stuff up to the camera but this is the coiling kit and I'll put a link in the description this comes from coil-master.net and this is a way for people who uh, are new to rebuilding or new to coiling uh, for them to kind of build uh, their own coils in a very simple simple way blue screwdrivers blue screwdrivers. These are like iconic now in the vaping industry. Everything comes with blue screwdrivers. I don't even know why this thing comes with blue screwdrivers. So what I'm going to do is show you this and how it works. So they are not labeled at all. So the, the pole, they give you the sizes that they let you build on are one millimeter, 1.5 millimeter, two millimeter, 2.5 millimeter, and three millimeter. The only problem is that the, they're not labeled in any way. So I'm assuming that's the one millimeter because it's the tiniest. You kind of have to eyeball it. They're not labeled in any way, which is, I feel like that's really really bizarre so let's see what that one is okay that one's a little bit bigger let's use the smallest one just because i've never used the smallest one 
And they all come uh, wrapped up in, in, in plastic. They all come wrapped in plastic, which I know was crucial. I know was crucial to the... Uh, oh, come on. Which I know was crucial. But so you, come, you, get, you get a base. Hang on. I apologize. I told you this blog was going to be weird. Okay, do you see that in there? That's what your coil is going to be getting wrapped around. Okay? And this is how it comes, and they all look the same. Do you see this? These are the tops. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take the base right here. This is the base. It says Coil Master on it. And so let's say, yes, I want to build around this, this tiny little thing. I want to make some fucking super micro coils. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm gonna unscrew the base, right? Then this goes in here, and then this goes back on top. So what you end up with is the pointy part sticking out of the base, and then this, you see the pointy part goes into that center hole, and then there's a little a little nubbin right there and that's what actually wraps your coils so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off some 26 gauge canthal I'm gonna show you the problems that I run into while using this coil master thing it's strange it's strange it's strange so looking at the base here you see that hole right there there's only one that's your hole right there. That hole right there, let me see if I can get in the light. That's where you're gonna feed your wire through. So you feed your wire through like that. You See how I fed the wire through there? So I like to feed some through and then I grab it and hold the other wire there with my thumb. And then all you need to do is take the top that you were using and you have to use a different top each time because each one has a special center hole for whatever size of coil that you're building on there. So I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna put this little nubbin part away from the coil. So that's gonna go in the middle. That's gonna go away from the coil. And so what happens, watch this action right here. I'm gonna start twisting it. I'm gonna start twisting it, twisting. Twisting, shit. Twisting, twisting, shit. Twisting, shit. Basically built a fucking stovetop coil on here. We're gonna try this again. That, that one is so fucking tiny. That is too tiny. And this is what it produced. <laughs> Look at this. That's what it produced right there. It looks like a goddamn stovetop coil. So, what we're gonna do is, fuck that one. Let's get that one out of here. Let's do a bigger one. Nope, that one's smaller. That one's big. Is there a medium sized one? Okay. Let's do the medium sized one. I believe this is the two millimeter one. This, this is probably the two millimeter one. So do you see in comparison that that one's a lot bigger for wrapping your coil around? Same thing, I'm just gonna use the other side of the canthal. I'm gonna slide it through right there and hold it down. And I'm gonna put my finger over this last fucking fucked up stovetop coil we did. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Pardon me again. So then I can slide this on put it in the middle and then I'm going to use this to twist to twist to twist to twist see now we're really getting somewhere and you kind of have to count I have not been counting at all but what you should end up with is a sick oh shit I'm gonna have to cut this So that is what I ended up with. Now that is a nice, tightly wound,
contact coil. I mean, that is stellar. So the problem is, I like to build on screwdrivers because I use the screwdrivers when I'm setting my coils into place. And so when you build on this coiling tool, that kind of prevents you from doing that. I'm constantly using my screwdrivers as a tool. If you've ever watched, pardon me, if you've ever watched anything building that I've done, I always use the screwdriver as a tool. I put it in, I adjust it up and down, I press it together, I pull it out, I put it back in again. You can't really do that when you're using these unless every when you build a coil, you can take this back out, right? And then I guess you could kind of use it like this. Although there's not much to grip on, you could still kind of use this to position your coil. This is if you want to make like really nice, super clean, micro sort of contact coils. That was a very effortless coil. Like if this was going on a K-Fun, that would be sick. I would throw this on a K-Fun no problem. Um, using it in an RDA might be an issue. I might have a problem with an RDA because, like I said, I wrap around a screwdriver. And so you can use that screwdriver to like push and fiddle and pull and tilt and, you know, get your coils exactly how you want them. With this little tiny metal nubbin thing, you don't really have the room to, uh, to do it, but that coil that I just built, that could easily go on a K-Fun. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna do is, I have two of these Coily Master things. Um, in fact, in my recent uh, journeys and movings, I found a lot of vape gear that I am straight up not gonna use anymore. So what I'm gonna do is uh, do some giveaways coming up here very, very soon. They're either gonna be right here on my YouTube channel, or they're going to be uh, on Instagram, and just and, and that's simply because I just I like Instagram. It's easy to keep track of hashtags. Like if I make up a hashtag for a giveaway, like go gr grim 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 green coil master, and you know you can use that hashtag, and that's how you enter. It's so so easy to enter giveaways on Instagram. I just uh, I just like running giveaways on Instagram. Um, I haven't really dug a way to do it on YouTube because I either have to keep track of comments or likes, which I can't even see the likes, or other, I don't know. I don't know how to do it on YouTube. Um, I might just do it again via email. I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of giveaways coming up, including a Segeli 150 watt, including an iStick 50 watt, including some Coil Master kits. Uh, there's some stuff. There is some stuff and fun giveaways coming up. Um, so let's get back to this real fast. Let's get back to this real fast. I've let it sit. I've let it soak. I'm gonna try to take a toot. I definitely feel some uh, some sloppy gurgliness in there. Holy shit! So that's a three. That's a that's a 0 0.4 ohm coil at 30 watts. It's giving me not even 3.7 volts. It's giving me 3.5 volts. And it's still like a traditional mouth to lung vape. It's not a, it's not a straight up lung inhale like you would with an RDA. Not at all, but the, the performance that I'm getting, dude, I wonder how high this could go. 40 watts? Ooh. 40 watts is giving me 4 volts at 0 0.4 ohms. Okay. I'm going to turn this back down to 30 watts. I bet I could rock this on a Mac and it would be just fine. What I'm going to do is post a link in the description. I uh, I have the same outlook that I always have with everything that ever comes across my table. I'm skeptical but optimistic. I was very skeptical of these, Mr. Professor Vape. I'm not gonna lie. In fact, I was reluctant to even accept these to show on video because I'm like, 
pre-built pro tank heads at sub ohms who's gonna nobody's gonna use that this <laughs> is rocking and rolling uh you have horrible prisoners cards professor so i'm gonna post a link professorvape.org where you can check them out if you have a pro tank or a pro tank 2 or something sitting around and you want some sub ohm coil heads for them with good non-resistance to resistance to non-resistance wire which is insanely difficult to do at home the flavor is nice the vape is warm i'm doing it like traditionally like you would on a cigarette mouth first then the lungs i can't believe that i literally cannot believe that that tastes great And it's not, it's wicking well, too. I'm scared of it going dry. That is crazy. Uh, I'm going to keep using this. I'm going to keep using this right now. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of a, a walk, uh, awkward first impressions. I'll post a link in the description to Professor Vape and the coiling kit. There will be some giveaways, like I said, going on. Um, Shit, this is going to be a long vlog. Do I do a review or do I do retro vaping? Do I do a review or do I do retro vaping? Let's do the world's fastest review first. All right, world's fastest review time. As you saw, this is the Tesla 120 watt wooden box mod. And I first saw pictures of this, Young June sent this to me. And I was kind of like, you know what? A wooden 120 box, that sounds sick. They additionally sent along the Invader 2, which don't get me wrong, let me throw some batteries in here. I dig the Invader 2 a lot. I think this is a stellar, mechanical mod it's a mech hybrid uh it takes two 18650s in parallel it's got grips right here it's got a button right here and it's got a 510 on top with a spring-loaded 510 connection it performs awesome the button is squishy i really like the invader 2 for anybody wondering and you run across an invader version 2 I think they're fucking cool, and I really, really like using this. Best of all, these are like 30, 40 bucks. I've seen them on Fast Tech for like 35 bucks. This is a 0 0.17 ohm coil build, and the button can definitely hold up to it. Uh, it uses a MOSFET, uh, USA MOSFET in here in the button for... Uh, for uh, amp protection on there. Uh, Tesla Invader 2, top notch. Everything on it, the fit and finish is nice. The door's magnetic. It doesn't really come down unless you want it to, but uh, great. This is a screaming deal and it's made very, very well. This, this is not. This is substantially more expensive and I'll post a link into the, in, where you can uh, look at it more into the description. Uh, where is it? So the metal one, Oh, they don't even have a price on their site. Come on, man. Come on. Tesla 120 watt box mod. Uh, vaping cheap. Okay, so let's look on Fast Tech. $71. $71 on Fast Tech. So let's talk about the things that I don't like about it, which is basically everything. I like that it's wood. I like wood mods. I just do. I think they're great. The button, clicky. Goes up to 160 watts, 165 watts, which you may or may not need. Uh, this is a 0.4 ohm coil. I don't know what the uh, exact specs are on it, though. Uh, it goes up to 11 volts. Uh, maximum output current is 24 amps. It will read down to a 0 0.2 ohm, 0 0.2 to 3.5 ohms. They make a metal version, which I think would be made much, much better than the wooden version. The main problem I have with the wooden version is it's a little on the big side. It's just a big box. I wish these grooves right here for your fingers were a little bit more pronounced. As it stands, they don't accomplish anything. They don't make it more comfortable. They just don't accomplish anything. I hate this stupid fucking tribal graphic on the side. When I saw the pictures of it, I saw this and I was like, cool, that's a skull. And it says Tesla and that's badass. And then on the door, 
yeah, it's ri this ridiculous tribal pattern on there. The button's clicky and it fires every time. Here's what I hate, the door. Do you see the door just being a wobble machine? It just wobbles like crazy and I can't figure out how I could sand this down. I don't think I have, I don't think I can. I don't think I can sand this down to where it won't be wobbly. No matter where, do you see how wobbly this door is? It just opens in the front. There's like a huge gap and then when you close that gap, it sticks up in the back. It's just wobbly as hell. The door, it, it's poorly, look at that. Do you see the door just wobbling like crazy? And it's because it's in the middle. I don't know if it's on the batteries or no, it's definitely not on the batteries. Maybe it's this ribbon. Maybe that will solve all my problems. Nope, it's still wobbly as fuck. Super, super janky wobbly door. Here's the thing, if you're looking at Tesla wooden mods, and this is gonna be a very, very short review, just skip the 120, go for the Invader 2. It's a much better deal and it performs much better. You can use it as a mech mod. Just great, just great performance. I mean, it works like a mech mod and it's fantastic. This, eh, maybe try the metal one, but honestly, I wouldn't even risk this super janky wobbly door that I hate and is wobble-tastic. It just bothers the crap out of me. So yeah, F this. I don't like it. I don't like the wobbly door. If this was non-wobbly and maybe in a darker color, uh, I had originally asked for black and there's always some communication issues between you and vendors in China. Uh, I had asked for black and uh, I didn't get black. I got brown and the door is wobbly. And uh, maybe if I had gotten the black one and the door wasn't on there, I would be much more pumped on it. It does do 120 watts. It is easy to adjust the wattage and voltage up and down. And the button is nice and clicky and it fires every single time. With that said, oh, I turned it off. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. King Zone. Tesla. System on. Welcome to your vape. 32 watts. <coughs> don't buy it. Just don't buy the Tesla wooden 120 watt box mod. Don't do it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's going to be a gamble if you get a wobbly door. So what I want to do now is retro vape. Well, let's retro vape. So this was uh, this was one of my favorite products of all time, and I'm really hoping it still works. So, once upon a time, there was a store called Vapor Talk, and I believe they still exist. They do Vapor Talk, Vapor Talk Store. Uh, if you click on their digital mods section, which okay, uh, they have vamos, they have everything. Well, they once upon a time used to make a pass-through, and pass-throughs used to be incredibly popular. They don't sell it anymore, but I am gonna link to their store since that's where I bought this pass-through from. Once upon a time, pass-throughs were the thing, and I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting for pass-throughs to come back. So far, mech mods have come back and are insanely popular, now squonkers, bottom-feeding juice mods. We used to call them bottom feeders. Those are coming back like with a passion. I'm hoping that pass-throughs come back someday. This is the Vapor Talk VP pass-through, and I'll try to find my original video for it. I I loved this thing. Um, it was five volts. I believe it was only 3.7 if you used it on your computer, and five volts if you used it out of the wall. And I'm not sure what the difference was there, but it's in sort of anodized aluminum battery it's not a battery though it just gives you power and it came stock Ooh, i can't get this adapter off of here it came stock with a 901 but they included a 510 so it was a 510 connection on there so what i'm going to attempt to do is unplug my mouse 
Yeah, I know. And plug this in. Oh, it lights up. Look how green this lights up. Can you see it? Green. It's lighting up so green. Wow, that really, you can't really see that. But it lights up a brilliant green color. So what I'm going to try to do is plug this Subtank Nano on here because... Oh, it's not going to fire. Shit. Oh. There was a little bit there. There was a little bit there. So this is 1.2 ohms, and I was really hoping it would work on here. It's not going to work. It's not going to work on here. Um, in today's day and age, 1.2 ohms is still too low for the vapor talk pass through. And I don't think I have a 510 uh, atomizer that's going to work on here. And that really bums me out. I figured 1.2 ohms, sure, that's totally enough homage for. Uh, Ugh, I don't have an atomizer. Uh, that bums me out so bad. God, that bums me out so bad. It's definitely not going to work with like a uh, a like a like a 0.5 ohm Atlantis. Everything I have right now, I'm looking at is sub ohm. Nothing is normal ohm. And by normal, I mean anything above like 1.2. This atomizer was the highest ohm thing that I had, and it was 1.2 ohms. Uh, yep, my K-Fun's 1.2 ohms, too. Let's try it. Let's try the K-Fun. Let's try the K-Fun on here. Hmm. It's giving me the world's weakest ass vapor. Weak. But once upon a time, honestly, I wouldn't have cared about that much vapor. I'm, I apologize to anybody listening or anybody watching. I'm just trying to get some friggin' vapor out of this K-Fun with the VP pass-through. <coughs> wow. Wow. So, yeah. The appeal of the pass-through was you could plug it into the wall or plug it into your desktop computer and not have to worry about charging your batteries. In fact... I talked to somebody once upon a time back on ECF and they used to rock a 510 pass-through into a battery pack that they wore around like with a messenger bag and a USB battery pack in it and would just plug in their pass-through and have a cord. They were like a ghostbuster essentially. But they're like, oh yeah, I can vape for you know three days straight on this, and I don't have to worry about charging my my battery pack or my pass through or anything like that. And it's such a weird thing to think about. In fact, one of my old subscribers who I haven't heard from in forever, a vaping affair. She was down in uh, New Zealand, Australia, vaping affair, vaping affair. Um, she uh, she did a review for this as well. And uh, I did a review for it once upon a time, and I thought it was just the shit. I thought it was the bee's knees, and I really wish I could rock this on there. Maybe it's an issue of power. Maybe I'm not getting enough power. You think my MacBook will char or do it better? I don't have another USB here. I don't think... Uh Time to refresh yourself and visit our snack box. All right, well, I apologize about that. My whole, my whole computer froze. I unplugged my pass-through. Whole computer froze, and then it came back, and then my video was frozen, and then because because my luck. Plug this into my MacBook. Uh, it's still not. Uh, it's still not giving me anything good. Nope, it's not even firing anything now. Ah, damn it! Damn it, man. Well, once upon a time, 
the VP pass through was uh, my thing. It was really light. It lit up. I even had a stand for it. Can you believe this? I had a like a plexiglass stand so it could sit on. It was like this curved Star Trekky looking thing, and it just sat on my desk. This is. 2009. This has got to be 2009. And uh, it just sat on my desk and it was great because I knew I could come home from work. And even if none of my, pardon me, even if none of my batteries were charged, I could throw all my batteries, stick batteries, mind you, on the charger and I could get into my computer room and I could, uh, I could vape on my VP pass through because it was supplied out of the wall or out of my USB cord. This was it. Back in the day, I think these were $75, something like that. I don't know. I'm just waiting for uh, pass-throughs to make a return because pass-throughs were awesome. I'm going to go ahead and just re-retire this to the graveyard of forgotten vape gear. Um, someday, if there's ever a vaping Smithsonian, as Basil Ray has mentioned many times, I do have some relics and some artifacts that would uh, that could go in there quite well, including, uh, well, you know... Uh, uh, you know, uh, pass-throughs and, and very, very old mech mods. I think next week I'm going to try to bust out my Helix for the retro vaping segment. See this? Oh, so this is 1.3 ohms. Um, so, we're done with that. We're done. We did a review. We did first impressions. We did retro vaping, beer, shout outs, so much stuff. Before we do music real fast, I want to give a shout out that I forgot about to uh, my old running buddy, um, Raven Vapes 5v510. Although I mean, I think he's uh, I think he's just going by Raven Vapes now because nobody vapes a 5 uh 510 at 5 volts anymore. I think he's just going by Raven Vapes now. Well, he decided uh, that he would cash in again on vaping's uh, popularity. So here's the thing. Raven Vapes and I used to be really good friends. Um, we basically invented vaping together. And he retired from the scene. Um, he didn't stop vaping. He just stopped doing videos. And now that vaping is popular, you know, pop, much more popular than it was, and people like myself have continued this whole time doing videos and reviewing good products and shit products and going to meets and paying our dues and putting in the hard work, now he's going to swoop back in and sort of uh, be like, hey, remember me? I'm Raven Vapes. I used to do vape videos, and now I'm doing them again. And it kind of... It kind of just seems like a fame grab to me. Um, I haven't talked to the guy, so I'm not 100% sure where his intention is. Um, I have checked out his newest video. It's it's actually pretty good. I'm surprised he uh, I'm surprised he did such a good job. Um, honestly, being that out of practice, I'm I'm shocked that he did such a good job. So. There you go, Raven Vapes. Consider yourself shouted out. I'll post a link in the description uh, if you want to watch his new video as well as subscribe to his YouTube. Um, but yeah, so so that's a thing. Again, just seems like a fame grab, but uh, but that's not that's not my place to say. So music, let's get into music. If you uh, follow any of my playlists on Spotify, you'll know that I added some stuff to the new Rad Things playlist. And that's what we're going to go to right now. New rad things. Uh, what I added was there's this, I don't know the name of this band. Arcane? I think they're called Arcane. You know what? I might as well just play this on my Mac. It's going to sound better, isn't it? I know. I know a USB device has been disabled, you dumb Macintosh. I'm going to open up Spotify here on my Mac, and uh, I think the speakers are going to sound better in that. Uh, playlists. New rad things. I think this band is called Arcane. Yeah, Arcane. And this is a song called Promises Part 2. It's good. It's 
It's like uh, progressive, thrashy. And, you know, when I first started listening to it, it kind of reminded me of Catatonia because he sings, like, very majestically over this, like, upbeaty sort of metal portion. It's cool. It's cool stuff. And this is a long song. This is like a 10 minute long song. It is a long song. But Arcane. I've never heard of Arcane before. Can we get to where he sings? Yeah, listen. He sings like just beautifully and they have like these mellow opethy sort of breakdown parts. It's it's great. It's beautiful. I'll post a link uh, in the description to uh, hopefully a video of theirs. If not, jump on Spotify and follow my new Rad Things playlist. Got some pretty cool stuff on there. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about, ages. Now, Ages is black metal, just straight up black metal. And the, the reason that I'm listening to this is a couple days ago, I got sucked into a black metal documentary that I had found on YouTube called Until the Light Takes Us. And back in 2002 or 2001, I became very, very fascinated with black metal and the black metal scene in Norway in the early 90s. And how it was kind of just these group of teenagers that didn't really know what they were doing. They were just trying to be evil for evil's sake. They were burning down churches. They were uh, Faust, the drummer of Emperor, just straight up murdered a dude um, in in Norway. They would desecrate graves. They were trying to like get rid of Christianity in 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 Norway and. I just became fascinated like this culture that had spawned from a couple of guys that had basically invented a genre of music and this genre of music was supposed to sound awful. It was not supposed to be something that you would listen to. It was supposed to sound abrasive. It was supposed to sound offensive. And so there's all these new black metal bands that are coming out that are kind of keeping that true black metal sound uh, ages is kind of one of them. They have these wispy, like, vocals and, like, hauntingly, like, echoing sounds. Uh, ages. The song is called The Malefic Menis... Mesinima? Mesinima? Mesinima. Mesinima. I don't even know. I'll try to find it on YouTube and I'll post a link uh, in the description if you're interested in listening to some black uh, metal. It's a very acquired taste. I don't often listen to black metal but when i do it's all i listen to like i go on these kicks where it's like all i want to hear is black metal that sounded like it was recorded in a fucking basement like that's what i want to hear ages black metal for black metal for black metal um this other song i came across again is kind of catatonia ish at least that's what it reminds me of uh it's from a band called red moon architect and Again, I had never heard him before I heard him on Spotify. This song is called Cradle, and it's doomy, and it's heavy. Let's give it a listen. Oh. I dig it. I dig it a lot. And I, I had never heard of Red Moon Architect. Again, Spotify is great for discovering like new artists and stuff that you're you know you didn't know that you were into. So yeah, uh, Cradle by Red Moon Architect. Um, it's this. It's heavy. It's doomy. Oh, there's like a female singing part. Bet you didn't know I had that lovely of a singing voice, did you? So yeah, that's some music. Um, 
Red Moon Architect, Arcane, and Ages. They're all on my uh, new Rad Things playlist on Spotify if you wish to follow that. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up. It's it's probably going to run long. Um, I don't really have any time for some viewer mail. We covered the Tesla boxes. We did uh, some beer shout outs. Uh, don't forget to go to Kassad.org as well as the Vaping Militia. Um, you got you to gotta fight for your right to vape, man. I know that sounds so cliche, but literally every state and local government, uh, in addition to the looming FDA regulations, are trying to rid the United States of vaping. Uh, in Denmark, where did I post? In Denmark? there It's just a straight up vape ban. Like, you will be prosecuted, criminally prosecuted for vaping. Uh, it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous because this is the biggest life-saving thing ever uh, that has ever come across uh, in anybody's lifetime ever. Maybe not bigger than like penicillin or like uh, smallpox vaccinations or something like that, but this is huge. Um, Non-smokers don't understand the struggle of quitting smoking. With that said, uh, I got a new office that I am insanely pumped on. I have a wall of art behind me. I've got plenty of light from the sun to uh, do my videos, and I'm going to be going a lot of places. Um, totally missed out on Tampa. Uh, funny story about that. Here's what's happened. Here's what happened in Tampa. I booked my flight for Friday so I could get there Friday night, go to the event Saturday, Sunday, fly home Monday. I had a foolproof plan. I gave myself a three-hour layover in Dallas-Fort Worth because I hate missing my connecting flights. My flight to Dallas got delayed about an hour and so I'm sitting at the airport past TSA just going okay an hour is not that bad got delayed two hours and so now I'm thinking wow this is cutting it really close got delayed three hours and so I'm just sitting there eating my Chinese food from Panda Kitchen or Panda Express and I go talk to the guy and he's like well a lot of the flights are delayed today, so chances are your flight out of Dallas will be delayed as well, so you'll easily make your connection. I was like, oh, okay, that sounds great. My flight got delayed five hours. I sat in the airport for three of those hours. Finally, my flight from Dallas-Fort Worth to Tampa got straight up canceled. So I call American Airlines on my way back home in the taxi cab, and I said, hey, my flight got canceled. Can I rebook for tomorrow? Because I figure at least I can fly there Saturday and have one day in Tampa at the event and fly home Monday. She says, sure. I get an early flight, 8.15 a.m. I get to the airport. That flight got canceled. And my flight from Dallas, Fort Worth to Tampa got straight up canceled. And she's like, do you want to rebook for Sunday? We could get you there Sunday night by 10 p.m. And I said, no. I don't want to rebook for Sunday. I don't want to be there Sunday night at 10 p.m. because I missed the entire event, American Airlines. So needless to say, things didn't happen for me in Tampa. But we have the SoCal Vape Expo coming up here in March. Additionally, I will be at Vapor Slam in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at the end of March. And I just discovered, yes, I will be traveling to uh, the ECC event in Niagara Falls in April. It's going to be like two days before my birthday, um, and I'm excited about it. Um, there's gonna be some other people there, which I don't know if I'm at liberty to say who's gonna be there, but I'm really excited to be there. I'm excited to see my friends. I'm excited for that event. I'm excited for VaporCon West happening in Reno in July. I'm really excited for Vapor Slam because that's where I get to see the Plumes of Hazard guys. That's where I get to hang out with Flitz. That's where I get to hang out with Matt. That's where I get to meet Cheeksy. Namber Juice will be there. I will be there. Um, it's going to be great, and we are sending one lucky winner who has already been announced. His name was Ricky. I'm a terrible person. We we're running a contest on amberjuice.com to send somebody there, or a sweepstakes. We we're running a sweepstakes on amberjuice.com to send somebody there, and I forgot his name. But anyway, we're sending someone to Vapor Slam, and they're going to hang out with us and uh, and uh, watch the roast of Grim Green, which I am nervous and excited about. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming up, a lot of cool products, mods, regulated mods. I think the three videos a, work, a week is working well. Mechmon Monday, uh, RBA Tuesday, and Wildcard Wednesday, and uh, that's it. So thank you so much for sticking with me during this very strange transitional time for me. I hope to bring you so much more quality content in the future that you won't even be able to turn it off. But that's 
what I got. I'm going to try to think real quick if I'm missing anything or missing anybody that I was supposed to shout out or talk to. Robin, Stewart, that's what I got. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I'm going to grab my uh, box. As always, let's keep on vaping.